Howdy folks, Troy with V-Twins, the V8s, uh, coming on today to do a little uh, tutorial as far as uh, retrofitting your 9-inch Ford rear axle with disc brakes, including an emergency brake. We have our project truck behind us here, 51 Ford, we've been doing some work on, um, so uh, my customer is asked to uh, put an emergency brake in the vehicle. The vehicle already had disc brakes in the back, but it had no provision for an emergency brake. So we decided to go with the MBM system. Uh, you'll remember it, I showed you guys how to put that system on a eight and three quarter uh, Mopar rear end. You can check the link up above, over here maybe, <laughs> up above, and uh, if you want to check out the installation of this kit on a Mopar. But we're going to work on this Ford 9 inch today. This is a pretty slick little setup. It comes with everything you need. So if you have drum brakes on the back of your 9 inch Ford, this is the kit for you. It comes with rotors, um, calipers, pads, all the bracketry, um, multiple brackets actually for different, Ford 9 inch has a couple of different flange arrangements and I noticed that there's a few variations that didn't fit my rear end so I'm assuming they fit other rear ends. It was actually three bracket sets for it that mounted to the rear end and um, so anyways that's really nice so you buy one kit and fit any rear end and then um, we've got all the necessary hardware brake lines and uh, emergency brake cable provisions as well so we're going to go through the whole thing first we'll get the uh, the install done and then we'll move on i'll probably do a separate video for the emergency brake okay so the first thing we're going to want to do is is remove all of our brake components now my truck didn't have drum brakes on it. it had it already had the disc brakes i already disassembled this of course but in your vehicle you're going to want to remove the tire the drum all that type of stuff uh, next thing you're going to want to do is pull this axle out. Now this axle has four bolts that hold the backing plate on. You can remove those four bolts. And then you would probably want to use an axle puller, which is going to bolt on three. Uh, it's usually a triangle shaped item with a slide hammer on it to pop this axle out. Once you do that, the axle will come right out like this and you'll have a bare flange. You'll notice that this flange is all nice and clean so what I do is I like to have clean parts so I'll take a little bit of emery paper and sand this flange nice and clean so I have a nice clean mating service surface to um, when I put my axle back in I have a nice clean surface I can put a little bit of sealer on there just to make sure nothing goes in or comes out these Fords have a seal on the inside. It'd probably be a good idea if you do this to change the seal on the inside so you get a good, um, so you don't have any leaks. We've already got that all done on ours. So now we're going to move on to the next thing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start putting this together. And to do this, we're going to want to um, grab a spacer, drop a spacer on the axle, and then put the axle in the vehicle. Step one. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to select an axle flange, an, uh, one of the spacers out of the kit. It comes with a whole bunch of different spacers. Basically your spacer, it mimics the thickness of the backing plate and the design of the backing plate. So you just got to figure out which one of these fits on the end of your axle housing and then we take and drop that down over our axle and match it up with the bolt holes on the axle. Now. Um, this is where I like to use a little bit of sealer. So this piece goes against the housing and then the flange here goes against the, um, the rear end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of sealer on there to keep all the crap out and then I'm going to pop the axle in. Okay, so here's my axle housing here. So I got a little bit of gasket sealer. I'm not going to get crazy. I just like to put this stuff on here because it's not really... Um, like a ceiling surface, but when I took this axle off, it was all like surface rusted in here, and a little bit of a little bit of a silicone sealer on this would have kept all that moisture out of here, and you wouldn't have to worry about that. I could take this piece here, which it mimics my flange. I showed you how I dropped it over the axle. You can also put it on here this way, and now I'm going to put just a little bit of sealer on the outside of this. For the same reasons, it keeps all the crap out of it. You know, most of these vehicles have been driven in all kinds of weather, and now we're rebuilding them, 
and chances are they're never really going to see the sand and the salt and all that, but still we want to keep all that crap out of there. So now I got that all set. Now I'm going to slip my axle in. So I'm just going to support my axle as it goes through this seal and slide it right in here nice and easy. And then if you grab the axle like this, you can tip it so you can feel it going into the rear end, into the spider gears. So, yep, there we go. So now we're dropping in. And now I got it right up against it. Now the next thing is, is our bracket that goes on here for our rear end. I'll show you that. So this is the bracket that goes on the rear end. So it fits on the rear end like this to hold your caliper back here like this. So let me, uh, let me work on the bench. So I got my parts laid out on the bench here and I'm gonna show you how this goes together. Um, you need to select the bracket that fits your flange. So you need to match this up with the flange on the rear end housing. Now the position of this is you'll notice there's two holes here and two holes here. Your caliper is going to want to kind of sit on the back side of your axle. Maybe between like say the two o'clock and four o'clock position. This is your caliper bracket. You'll notice these four bolt holes match up with these four bolt holes. Okay, and if you look at it now, it's on that, if this is my axle, this is my bracket piece here, and then my caliper will go on here. I'm gonna show you how it fits onto the axle now. So here's our axle. You can see our bracket on the back, like I showed you, it's kind of like at that, at that 11 o'clock position on this side, but you know, a little bit off center. So this sets up your caliper to be in this area here. So this is the back side where I bolted my flange on. You can see how my flange goes on here like this. So it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a C around this axle housing like this. So it drops on like that. Okay, so now that I have my nuts on, I can take and tighten these up. I mean, these particular nuts are locking style nuts, so they're gonna go, they crank on there pretty hard the whole way, so that they don't back off. Um, so it's gonna take a little bit of time, so I figured well, I can do this while I talk to you about some other things. So what I did with my kit, you'll notice that my rotors are painted and that my calipers are painted and uh, some spacers that we're going to use, those are also painted. Um, I like to do that because I like my stuff to stay nice and clean and not rusty. So I take and fit this whole system together. So the first thing I do is I take all my parts out, make sure they're the right ones, make sure everything fits everything, and then I pre-assemble it. Once it's all together and I look at it and I know it's going to work, then I just take it apart because I haven't, I generally just put everything together finger tight. I take it apart, I clean everything up, I tape off what I got to tape off, and I paint all my parts. So I did that yesterday. I painted my, my uh, rotors and my calipers, and then I uh, let it sit overnight, and I'm back the next day, and... Uh, to put it together so now when it's all done it's not gonna it's gonna look really good and you know six months from now when you peek through the holes in the in the aftermarket wheels you're gonna see a black rotor and a red caliper they might be a little bit dusty but you're not gonna have that rusty um, rotor look that you see on a lot of these things because people don't realize that that rotor is just bare steel these other brackets that we have here that are, are silver, they have been plated with, uh, with probably zinc or something of that nature to prevent them from rusting. So I don't have to go through a whole, lot of, a whole lot of work to paint the brackets. I'm really not worried about that. So I just figured I'd give you that little heads up. So the next thing, when, so as I'm tightening this, you'll notice I'm kind of moving around a lot. I want to take and tighten this in a crisscross pattern so I get nice even pressure pushing my axle back in. So I'll, I'll bolt one side, I'll, I'll tighten one side, I'll tighten the other side, and I'll just continue to crisscross this 
until I have it completely bolted tight. Now I will uh, show you what this bracket looks like with the handheld after I get it all tightened on here, but I mean, this is pretty basic stuff if you've done any mechanical work and you've got something that's pressed into something else, you want to make sure that you have it on there nice and even. And I like to have my stuff tight so that we don't have any problems down the road. Then after I'm tight, I just go back over, double check everything, and make sure it's all tight. I'm going to bring the handheld over, and I'll show you what this looks like. Go. So now we have this on, our axle is all back in. The next thing we're going to want to do is work on getting our caliper bracket on. Now we're going to put our bracket that holds our caliper onto this bracket. So you'll notice there's these four holes and they correspond with the four holes that are in this bracket. So it's gonna go like this. However, this needs to be set inboard to set the, the caliper in the right location for the rotor. In the kit, they give you these spacers. Now, they don't come like this. I painted them black so they wouldn't rust. Um, but the, what's gonna happen is you're gonna put your bolts through this bracket, then you're going to put the spacers on, then you're going to put this bracket on, and then you're going to put the nuts. And I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so here we are on my bench. What I've got in the kit is this is the bracket that's going to mount my caliper. These are my four mounting points that correspond with the ones with the bracket that I put on the rear end. These are the four bolts that are going to hold it. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here and we're going to put our four bolts through this bracket towards the inboard side so it looks like this. Then we're going to take these four spacers, we're going to put these four spacers, we're going to put these four spacers over these bolts like this. So now we've got our bolts coming through, we got our spacers. Next thing that's gonna come on is we're gonna slide our bracket on from the back side, and we're gonna use the bracket goes on, then we're gonna use our lock washers and lock nuts. I don't know why they give you lock washers and lock nuts, but obviously it's not gonna come loose. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I can't hold the camera and do that, so I'll flip over to the other camera. Okay, so we've got our bolts through our bracket. We've got our spacers on the back side. I'm gonna put these nuts somewhere handy. And then I'm gonna support these bolts on the inside with my hand and slide this bracket over all four of the bolts. So I have the, um, I have the bracket, the spacer, and then this bracket. Then I'll place my lock nut, my lock washer over the top bolt and I'll get my first nut started, hopefully. This can get a little tricky. Extra hands would be great at this point in time, but you know. So if I just do the, um, you know, the top and the bottom just really quick, it will hold my bracket on. Get them snugged up a little bit by hand. Put my other nuts and washes on and then I'll bring the other camera over and I'll show you exactly what this looks like okay so here we are so here's my bracket that's on the flange though these are my spacers that I have that I painted and then here this is my caliper bracket here and my nuts are on the back side so I'm gonna get these tightened down and then we'll work on getting the rotor on and the caliper now my next thing is, is I'm going to want to take and put my rotor on. Now I painted my rotor, but I got a bare metal surface on the inside of it here where it mounts to the axle flange. And what I like to do is use some never seize or anti-seize compound on the back side of these rotors. 
And the reason I do that is over time, you'll get some rust buildup in between here and you won't be able to get the rotor off if you need to take it off to service your axle or the brakes or what have you. So I put some never sees on the inside of my brake rotor as such on the mating surface for the um, for the axle. Take this and put this on here. So now I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna locate the right set of holes and boom. Now my rotor is on. The next thing I wanna do is I wanna get my caliper on. But to put my caliper on, I've got to put my pads in there and make sure they're in the right place and have my bolts that come through to hold my pads and my caliper. So now back over here, what I got is my caliper and I got my two brake pads and I got my two bolts. I'm going to do the same thing with the caliper bolts as I did with the inside of the rotor is put a little bit of never seize on here. So if you ever have to take this apart, you won't have a rough situation and you can't get it apart. So I went ahead and did that. Now on the inside of this caliper, you're going to see a spring. I'm going to use this other little camera so we can get in really close. This spring holds tension on the brake pads and it makes it so that the brake pads don't rattle. So you'll see this spring right here, and then you'll see this pad has this little notch. This little notch is gonna go in this little spot when you put it in there, and you're gonna slide this pad down against this spring, and it's gonna wanna pop out. Now what's gonna hold this when it gets in the vehicle is the through bolt that comes through here is gonna catch this pad right here in this notch. But in the meantime, you're going to have to hang on to it. So I'm going to put this together, and then we're going to slide this on. So I got my two caliper bolts. I'm going to set those somewhere where I can grab them quite easily. I've got my Allen wrench. I'll put that right in my pocket. And I'm going to put these brake pads on this caliper as such. You will know if that spring is in the right place because you're going to feel that brake pad kind of fighting with you to pop out. So I've got that in there. I like to put the bottom one in first because it's a little bit easier to get at. Once you have the bolt, slide it through and catch the edge of that pad. That will keep your pad where you want it to be. Okay, great. All right. So now I've got it on there and I got my, my bolt is catching my inner pad and holding it in place. Okay, so you'll notice that I got my bolt through here and it's catching my pad right there. My pad, my pad, because of that spring has some pressure on it and it won't let this bolt align. So I've got to turn this bolt and get it to go into this whole corresponding hole in the caliper. To do that, I'm going to use my Allen wrench and I'm going to guide this bolt into that hole right there. Unfortunately, I can't do that on the camera, but I just wanted to show you that. So I am back and I'm going to put this caliper bolt in here. So I'm going to use two hands, I'm going to kind of finagle this bolt to get it started into my bracket without cross threading it and to come into the other side of my caliper. All right, now once again, I'm not going to really tighten that, I'm just going to get it started and then I'm going to do the same thing with the top. It feels like kind of something's fighting you, but that's when you know you have that spring where you want it to be because it's going to hold the pad in place and it's going to stop the pad from rattling when you don't have any pressure on the brake pads. All right, so now I have this one started. I'm just going to get it snug a little bit. I 
Now I can tighten my bottom one. All right, so now my caliper is in position. It's bolted tight. My rotor's on. Now, my rotor is floating. In other words, it's not tight to the axle. So if you just hold it against the axle and go like this, the rotor should move freely. You shouldn't have any pressure on your brakes. So I'll bring the handheld over. I'll show you what this whole setup looks like. I got this done to the other side. And then the next thing that we'll want to do is we're going to start working on getting our brake lines plumbed in and get some fluid to these and get them bled. Okay, so here's our calipers on. Our bolts are through like they should be. And uh, the other thing I did want to mention is you want to make sure that your brake bleeder on these calipers is on the top. If I can see where it is, it's around the other side. It's right here. It is on the top side. You always want to have your bleeders up on the top. So that's what it looks like. Your rotor turns freely. Come over here to the other side. I got the same thing going on over here. This is my parking brake piece. My, um, my brake bleeder is here on the top. I'm through here. I got my bolts where they should be. My rotors can turn freely. And this is what our driver's side looks like. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our brake line attached from our caliper over to the frame area where our corresponding line comes from the front. So, what I have here is the brake lines that come in the kit. So I went and I test fitted them to make sure I had the right length and location. So what I did was I took my brake line, I went, I put it in place of where it's supposed to be on the caliper, and I went up to the frame to see where my bracket was to make sure that my brake line was gonna be the right length and configuration to do this, which is great. So I got that all set, but what I did notice is my brake line coming from the vehicle and my brake line going to my caliper, this line, was a little bit different size. What I did also noticed was there was an adapter placed in the brake line of my original setup, so I can steal that and use that for this. So I went back over to my other brake lines and I stole these adapters off. So these adapters are gonna go into my brake line here and then my, you know, my brake hose, I should say, and then my brake line will go into there and I'll have the right size. Okay, so one of the things I wanted to show you was, um, one of the little problems that I had with this particular kit is the situation with mounting these brake lines onto the bracket that's supposed to fit onto here. So what happens is the end of this line has a hexagonal portion. So in other words, it's kind of like a bolt. That is supposed to locate itself with this particular bracket inside of these slots, but my setup didn't fit. So if you look at where I made these marks, that's where my, my corners of my nuts are. So what I had to do was put this in the vise. I took this little square file and I filed these holes so I could get this to locate on here properly. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so when this is down on here properly, you'll see this looks like kind of a bolt down here. And then you wiggle this around and then this will drop down on here like that. So it's flush with where this clamp area goes. I mean this slot right here, which is where a clip goes. So now this clip right here slides in there and then the bracket not only holds the brake line in position, it stops it from turning when you're tightening it. So this is kind of really important and why they can't give you a hose and a bracket that fit each other I really don't know. Separate suppliers, but they should really get their stuff together. But if you run into this, all you got to do is get yourself a small square file like that and, um, and file the corners as needed until it fits in there properly. Okay, so now my line is located in the bracket like it should. I got my spring clip. I slid that on. This is already tight. I can put my brake line in here now and get that tightened. Now my opposite end of my line is going to come over here like this and it's going to turn and it's going to go into the, um, the caliper itself. Okay, so up here I got my 
adapter, my clip, and my line is connected. Now you may have to reform this line or reposition it because your line may be a little bit different than what it was before. I had a clamp over here, I had to loosen this up and kind of just tweak the line a little bit to get this connection proper and get it straight. Flare fittings have to be pretty much straight on. If you're off to either side, it will fight with you. Don't force it, just kind of Bend it until you get it right and you can you should be able to screw it on with your fingers and then tighten it with a wrench so we're mounted we're coming down and we're going right to our caliper right here now when you do these you have to make sure you have your um, copper compression washers on either side of this uh, connection otherwise it's gonna leak so we've got that done we've got this tightened I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side I'll give you a quick shot of the compression washer so this is what you have is you have a banjo bolt and then you've got two compression washers. One goes against the bolt, the other one goes against the caliper and the line goes in between the two and that's what creates the seal. So make sure you have that. This kit, they kind of set you right up. They put a little plastic thing on here to hold it so it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. So there you go. All right, at this point we're looking pretty good. We got a rotor, a caliper, our pads. We got our brake lines coming off of here. It's going up to the frame. It's tied into our braking system on the passenger side. Over here on the driver's side, same thing. We got our, we got our rotor, caliper, pads, brackets. All our bolts are tight. Caliper's tight. We got our line coming off of here. It comes over here like this and ties in over there. That's also tightened. So now the next thing is going to be to bleed the braking system. All right, folks, so there you have it. There's the complete mechanics of putting the, the calipers on, changing them out, putting the new ones on, getting the, um, the pads lined up with the caliper and, and the, the uh, brake lines all rooted so that they're not interfering with your wheels. Um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to bleed the brakes, and then pretty much the primary brake system is complete. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to work on our secondary brake system, which is emergency brake. That was the purpose of this whole thing. So, the, so what I'll do is I'll come on in the next segment and we'll lay out the parts for the emergency brake and we'll do it. Stay tuned. All right, so there you have it. Our project uh, 51 Ford and now has rear disc brakes and uh, everything's done right, looks really sexy. I walked you through the whole thing, uh, putting the stuff on, adjusting it. I didn't do a, uh, any tutorial on bleeding brakes. I figured that, that most people know how to do that. Um, if, you, if you have any questions regarding that, leave me a message, I'll respond. I have some cool tools that I use. Um, some power bleeders and things like that so that because I work alone I don't have somebody to pump the brakes and do that whole thing so I have some mighty back tools and some other tools that I use um, if there's anything that you'd like me to cover in a video uh, please uh, message me down below and uh, I usually always respond to my uh, to my my followers my people and um, yeah just message me and ask me to do something and if I can I will um, in the meantime, I really appreciate you tuning in. I would really hope that you would uh, like my video. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you would. I could really use the help there. And um, I just want to say good luck on your project.